And welcome back to Jeff Crane Hangate live at the Intercontinental Hotel. What a guest. A man who calls it like he sees it, especially when it comes to the economy. And yes, we need to know where we're going, how we're doing, because there's a lot of noise out there politically, and they always forget the little guy on the street. So Dr. David D. Harvard, no, Oxford, PhD, same thing. PhD, no. it's not the same thing. <laughs> Macroeconomics, breaking it down. Hashtag, is that great anger, Jeff? No, that's the Twitter handle. The hashtag is reality check. And Dr. David D has no, is not on Twitter, but Peter Stone says, tell Daktari to join Twitter. I'm in absolute agreement with his every word. Pass, by, pass him my greetings, he says. <laughs> Do you know him? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Probably. People right. choose you don't name, so. Jay Woody says, Dr. D's ideas are brilliant. Unfortunately, the truth is, he doesn't show how folks will eat. That's why he's always ignored. <laughs> That's Twitter for you, man. That's Twitter for you. Aniko Nathaniel says, today you're tackling great issues dear to us. Love Dr. D's thinking and choice of words. Okay, so, do you have anything good to say about the way government is being run by right now? Not just because it's Jubilee, but is there anything good happening right now? Oh... Uh... There might be, I haven't noticed. Uh, but it's probably because, uh, uh, well, yes, I mean, let, me, let me back up. A devolution. Aha. Uh -huh. Devolution Devol is working. Really? Absolutely. Uh, that's working. I mean, I, I take the newspaper every other day, and they very often run stories about what counties are doing. And these are real things, mm. you know. Mm dispensary here, a little road there, and, and that stuff is important. And when you go out there, people actually talk about it. Um, I, I went to a funeral the other day uh, in Lari, and uh, you know, there are speeches and the MC spoke, yep. and, and someone sp sp spoke about the county government, and uh, I don't know who it was, mm. he was just speaking at the funeral. Yeah. And he said, you know, that will be happy they are with, with what the county government is doing, because last year, they got 40 million shillings for their hospital to do one thing or another. And this year, uh, they got 200 million wow. for their hospital to do many other things. That, that struck me. That's deep in the village. Yeah. Uh, people are saying that they got money from the government to do things. I've been in this business for 25 years. That's not something you had a lot mm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the old system with yeah. before devolution. You started seeing a little bit of it with CDF. And now you're seeing a lot more of it uh, sort of uh, scaling up because, mm. of course, uh, county governments are... Uh, we, we haven't done enough in terms of taking stock and putting it all together. But I think if you actually do, uh, it will add up to, to fairly substantial uh, impact mm. on, on the things which actually affect ordinary people's lives. Good yes. to know. Yeah. Good to know. Devolution Ministry is run by the same person who runs NYS. You were very critical of what happened at NYS. Why? For, for various reasons. Let me just say that, uh, first of all, that, that, that lady happens to be a good friend of mine. She worked for me for many years, um, uh, more or less her mentor. So, is so, that right? Absolutely, yes. So she's smart like you? She is quite smart, actually. Uh, and I think she's also quite sort of serious with, with uh, and her heart is in the right place. Uh, having said that, now, what's wrong with NYS? Let me start uh, with what I haven't said. You know, NYS was started in the 60s as a safety net to provide livelihoods for really the guys who are falling through the cracks. In fact, originally it was for destitute children of Mau Mau. Okay? Yeah. And it's done that job pretty well. Mm. Now, one of the things you want to do with safety nets eh, is you don't want to sex them up. Because once you sex them up, eh, they attract people who have other alternatives. And then they marginalize the, the, the down and outs for who the safety net was meant. So that's one of yeah. the things where I feel very strongly about. That this was a safety net which has been working. It's been training very poor young men and women. And they, I know many of them. I did NYS when I was uh, one of those pre-university programs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, those days. Um, I know many young men and women who've gone through it. They had no other options. They've, I meet them every so often where they work 
there are mechanics and plant operators in all sorts of places. Yeah. And I think we're going to sort of blow that up in, in an effort to scale this and probably do it badly. Uh, the other thing, reason is, uh, if we want to solve the employment problem, that's not the way to go. You don't think so? No. Uh, the, because you need to understand the problem. Uh, our employment problem is not a jobs problem. It's a demographic problem. Uh, you've got a youth bulge and an economy which is not big to absorb all of them at the same time. Right. So, you know, because the decisions that lead to <laughs> the, the arrival of children are not the same decisions that drive the economy. Right. So you've got a big pipe trying to pour into a narrow pipe. Uh, so you've got to expand the pipe so that it, uh, all, these, all these people. Yeah. So putting money in, in this sort of thing is sustainable. Uh, scaling up this sort of thing. So as an employment solution, it's not the right employment solution. Reason number three is there are huge corruption risks when you scale something up that much uh, in a very short time. It doesn't have the capacity to, uh, to absorb the funds and use them well, and it attracts all sorts of characters, as we are seeing. Yeah. Um, whatever. And reason number four, these sort of militias are very vulnerable to abuse. Uh, now, when I've said that, people have thought that you're overreacting mm -hmm. and say, you know, really you can't have um, the whole NYS become a political militia. It's not the whole NYS which will become a political militia. We have a history of these things. Uh, it's just that people don't, don't follow them. Uh, there was a thing called anti-stock theft unit. That's right. You remember run by Goroko? PC. Goroko, yeah. They Abs ab absolutely. Yes, run by Mungai. Run right, by uh, Mungai yes. uh, at some point. Yes. Uh, we had some uh, incident with, um, with APs uh, during the last election. Uh, so the likelihood of some mischievous people putting in some units uh, in there which can be used for mischief. And of course the bigger it is, the easier it is to hide uh, some, some units which can get up to mischief mm. uh, within it. So it's a bad idea for you? Pardon me? You think it's a bad idea overall? I think it's badly thought out. Like many things that this yeah. government is doing, it's badly thought out. And this 800 million shillings supposedly that they caught before it was stolen, you think it's gone? You think it's I don't think there was any money being stolen. I mean, I tried to understand what was going on. Yeah. And what seemed to me to be going on was a budgetary mischief. The year was coming to an end. There were some people who had made some extra budgetary commitments of money. Probably there were some rackets there. But what they were trying to do is squirrel all this money away, mm -hmm. hide it in the system, so that it is available for them to, to make their payments before the year closed. Right. Uh, then it ran into all sorts of things and exposure uh -huh. and uh, whatever. But I don't think it was actually a plan to steal uh, 800 million shillings. Yeah. So what I find intriguing is why you would report that kind of fairly innocuous mischief to the CID. Right. Unless there's other stuff going on. Right. And I don't know what that stuff is. I mean, where are we now? 102, 103 to the dollar? It's, it's taking a slamming. So you will see a lot of emerging market currencies uh, also uh, sort of depreciating against uh, the U.S. dollar. But at the same time, yes, we, we do have some macroeconomic imbalances, some very severe ones. Yeah. If you're running a budget deficit of 10% of GDP mm. and a current account by deficit of 10% of GDP, and your exports are falling, and your imports are rising, mm. and your debt service is rising, people will begin to lose confidence in your currency, as well as your debt and all sorts of things. Yeah. If you look at debt service, for instance, um, our debt service, which is just interest, you know, cost of servicing our external debt, to as a percentage of our exports, which is where you get the money to pay, 
yeah, the foreign exchange to pay it, yeah. has tripled since Jubilee came to power. It was 3% uh, three years ago. It's now 10%, 10 percent, yeah. and rising. Now, if you hit 30%, I mean, obviously, if you go at that rate in another three, four, five years, you will hit. And there are some huge uh, payments coming through. bond, the big bond and all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you begin to go up that, that, that rate, then uh, you, it begins to undermine uh, the confidence uh, in, in your economy and that uh, in your macroeconomic management. And part of that uh, is reflected in the uh, weakening of, uh, of your currency because yeah. people change their portfolio allocations mm, uh, away from your, so from your currency. So you think you still, uh, still keep getting weaker, the shilling? It depends on what you do as uh, as government, as in terms of your policy. Mm. Uh, if you rein in your deficits, it was 88 not too long ago. If you rein in your deficits, then it could stabilize. Uh, if you raise interest rates very dramatically, uh, that too would stabilize it. But then you'd be uh, stifling your economy, mm. uh, and you're already doing some of that. We are having to raise interest rates, uh, which then of course hurts your your, your growth. Yeah. Um, but. Obviously, the, the solution is to rein in your deficits, um, mm. and we're not doing that. No. Like I said earlier on, mm -hmm. where's the money from the euro bond? I mean, we, did we raise 2.75 billion US? We raised 2.75 billion US. We said it was for infrastructure. A, a fair, some of it, 600 million, was to pay off an existing bank debt. I think we paid that off. Yeah. Uh, we, we used quite a lot of pay off debt which we hadn't planned because what happened is when we raised uh, the euro bond a lot of people who had invested in shilling bonds did not roll over their bonds they changed it because they probably bought euro bonds so they wanted they had more lower risk exposure to to, to a currency the bond funds a lot of them are my clients mm. so i know mm. what they do you know the <laughs> <laughs> so 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 they, they then unwound their shilling bond positions. Mm. So once they started unwinding these positions, you of course have to pay. Yeah. Uh, sort, of, uh, sort of redeem. So there was quite a bit of redemptions. I mm. mean, I haven't looked at the numbers lately. Yeah. But there was quite a number of redemptions which um, ate up. We're burning cash. What do we need to do to rein it all in? Discipline. Fiscal discipline. If we don't do it now, that will make us do it at some point. Mm. That, that's Structural what, adjustment. That's normally what happens. Austerity. Austerity. Yes. Like our friends up north. Like our friends up there, yes. No. We <laughs> They're there. Yeah. You know, Argentina was there, right. Ireland was there, yeah. Iceland went belly up, uh, Spain, with all sorts of people. It's, it's quite common. Economic, macroeconomic mismanagement is very common. Hmm. Yeah. Is there a silver lining? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel, Dr. Ari, at the end of the day? I, I, um, I, I, feel, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, there's nothing. Let me say, I, I, I would like to make a clarification, which I sometimes have to make to people. At this point in time, there is fundamentally nothing wrong with our economy. <coughs> people confuse two things. Yes. There's something wrong with our public finances. Mm. It's not the same thing. Okay? So the way we are running our public finances, I, I find irresponsible. But that then will feed back into the economy. Yeah. Yeah, so the economy has good prospects. But if we mismanage uh, public finances, that's going to mess the economy up as okay. well. Okay, before we end up, real quick, I, have, I talked about Obama at the, end, at the beginning of the show. And for two weeks, mm -hmm. you hammered this man's visit to Kenya. Mm -hmm. In about a minute, tell me, why didn't you think his visit was all that? Because everybody was doing backflips because this man came. What you, there's no gain, there's little gain. Real quick. Obama is the president of the U.S. and one of his key dockets is foreign policy. So when he grows aboard, he is pursuing U.S. foreign policy. I think it behoves us to ask, what is the U.S. foreign policy he is pursuing? So and that's what I did. I went and looked around and said, what 
is a for, this guy's foreign policy. And it turns out that his biggest issue in at this point in time and this part of the world is the Somali Yemeni terrorism business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've said. It looks like this is what this man is uh, is, 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 is is after. Yeah. And I'm not certain that his interests and their interests and our interests are fully aligned. So even as you celebrate, you want to ask, uh, you know, is, uh, is uh, this uh, just whatever bearing gifts mm. or... <laughs> and Kenya and Ethiopia are on the front line fighting we are, their war. We are the, they want us to fight a proxy war for them. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line. But at the end of the day, we get rid of ISIS, we get rid of Al-Shabaab. Can we? Hmm. Makes you want to say, hmm. <laughs> Dick Tari, good to see you. Come back more often. Oh, uh, well, we'll <laughs> we have to meet a couple of more times <laughs> at the cafe. At the ca and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be there tomorrow? Probably. I'll see you there. <laughs> Dick Tari, before I forget, you know, JKL has a new system. Mm -hmm. We give away little uh, gifts. We get a t shirt. I've signed it in the back. You see that? I've signed it. Okay. And guess what? What? One of the beauty about not being in public office. You can wear t-shirts. I don't have to declare. <laughs> <laughs> I like Obama. I don't you get have a to mug as well. A gift. Don't declare. I don't have to declare. I don't have to declare to my board, which is me and my wife. <laughs> Bring this to Java tomorrow. They'll refill it. <laughs> They'll refill it. Yeah. Good That's to see you. Asante Sana. Good job. And get on Twitter, man. Twitter's a cool place I'll, to be. I'll, I'll, I'll think you about it. think about it. it. <laughs> Dr. David D., folks, breaking it down. This mm -hmm. is what the state of economy is all about. Once in a while, we have to take a reality check. And that's our hashtag all evening long, reality check. Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff. And let's keep talking. Because if the moment we stop talking, I keep saying, is the moment we start fighting. Tomorrow night, right here on Inspiration Thursday, is one of the most accomplished musicians in the country. Aaron Rimbui has been through hell and back, and he wants to talk about it. Join us tomorrow night right here on JKL at 10 p.m. Keep tweeting. Keep Facebooking. Keep talking to us. That's what the show is all about. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Good luck. A son to son of Dr. Good one.